video, and in this video, Iran and Saudi Arabia go to war. Oh, I think I did this video before, but you know. What's a different way to provoke this? We can make Iran the aggressor. I see how to provoke that one. And why is Saudi Arabia also colored in? Don't ask me. And let's say, what's something Iran could do that would provoke this? Let's say they move through Iraq's territory, which Iraq allows, and they attack. No. Let's say they attack Oman instead, because that makes a lot of sense. I'm attacking Oman. And where do they attack it from? Oh, well, let's say in Yemen, they eventually somehow overcome Yemen, which I doubt could happen, and they start an advance, a full-scale advance in no man. With Saudi Arabia having warned them about this, And well, with this warning, not long after Saudi Arabia demands they withdraw, they refuse. So Saudi Arabia joins by force. But Iran was ready for the their treaty, the Peninsula Shield Force. And well, they land here, and Oman's coast is raided. With Iraq kind of just being a mess. Iran gets them the help and the axis of resistance. And this is what happens. They push into Q8. And they push down the coast. What's something you can do? They push along the coast. But Saudi Arabia at this point is ready, to which they've raided Yemen, cutting Yemen into two. Which Yemen falls, except where Iran is holding it together. With attacks from Iraq doing well. And they start pushing in from Iraq. And they push into Oman. But eventually this fails as Saudi Arabia cuts across there. Leading to Iran retreating. These Iranian troops, a lot of them, flee to that island, which Saudi Arabia can't take right now, because Iran has naval dominance. Well, it kind of stalls out. Not many people were interested in the video I did yesterday that was animated. That took a long time to make. I mean, a full day. You should check it out. It is a good video. Doesn't have music, though. So kind of not that great. But, yeah. And Iran gets pushed back. But after seeing this, they start sending forces here, and they do this. Palestine decides to join the war. Which is where Israel joins. And what's so good about this? Well, you know how Israel does in every conflict. And in three days, they do this. No, they don't get any further. As Jordan is being 
obliterated Israel is surrounded and cut away from Saudi Arabia. But Iran finally gets these troops back to their country, so Saudi Arabia goes on a raid taking this. And Iranian forces and Iraqi forces enter Saudi Arabia in huge numbers. They storm the country. They even make it to Qatar. They made in the UAE and Qatar being destroyed. Well, this allows this to happen. They push down. Omani forces do manage to escape. With Iran and forces getting a move on to the north. And Saudi Arabian forces getting pushed towards Riyadh. With a re-liberation of Yemen being started. Saudi Arabia and Iran are enemies. But I know who's a bigger enemy. Israel and Iran. With Israeli forces managing to start a campaign here. Well, that's probably because Israel is getting American support, but that's besides the fact. Well, lately Saudi Arabia has been having a bit of problems with the U.S. But their relationship has always been bad. If you think of it. And that's where they're pushed to. With Iran's priority to reestablish control over Yemen being put at, in an announcement. But the country is protesting still. So they're struggling to get people to fight without being forced. If this war did happen, they would be in trouble. And so they're getting pushed back. But Iran continues its plan to take back Yemen with them pushing north into the resource-rich side. And they push further, even taking the strategic port city of Aden. And then they push up, they manage to take Sanya's, the capital that's been occupied by the Houthis. But Saudi Arabia starts an advance, which they fail to do. They even push here. Fail. They try to push here. That fails. They're trying to cut the country in two. Split it from Israel. But Saudi Arabian forces have a good plan. And you know what they do? They push up from the south. And Israel starts a campaign here. And both start a campaign pushing the spearhead back. And they do this. And that front line falls. With at this point, Iran being in trouble with threat of encirclement right here. But they try to hold the coast. They hold the strategic port city of Aden. And then they try to hold here. Which allows Saudi Arabia to push them to there. And Saudi Arabia seeks opportunity. So they cut across here. No, well, that's what it looks like. And they push in to Qatar, taking Qatar back. But Iran isn't going to relent. They start another. Oh, when they see the war starting to turn for the worse, they start using drones. Which drones are a scary weapon to think about. What can a drone even hold? Like, that's crazy. While they push back air, <laughs> yeah, they kind of pause the. They kind of start their campaign here. Those yeah, with Iran's offensive being stalled out, Saudi Arabia's in the south doesn't.
with this happening. With the Oman, Yemen front line, or the Southern front line. After all these failures, Iran retreats back to the island. But then they have a retreat from that island, so now they're here. With Iran starting the speediest campaign ever seen in this war, yeah. Now, because they have to. And they basically do this. They basically do a spring offensive. But Saudi Arabia knew what they were doing, so they just retreated. As these forces were not well equipped or trained, well, Iran kind of falls back. With so much casualty being seen, well, morale drops in Saudi Arabia encircles this area. Well, Iran's in trouble now. With Azerbaijan seeing opportunity to get its lands back, and Turkey seeing as an opportunity to expand its wars in Syria and Iraq. Which is pretty smart. And then, along with Israel, they do a campaign. Although they start here, because this is where they are, and I think they're somewhere, like, probably there. And their troops fly in, connect with Azerbaijan. So with this being a major blow to Iran, Iran is forced on the retreat. Well... What else happens now? Well, Israel and Turkey connect. Kuwait pushes in to Iraq, and Jordania does. And this is basically how it ends. A lot of these fronts fall. With Iran seeking the opportunity to do a last campaign which they do pretty well with, liberating huge swaths of land. But the only problem with that is that they decide to hold a defensive in Kuwait, which is pretty smart, you would think, but they don't really do the best. Because they're using last resort troops now. Well, stuff doesn't exactly go their way. And, well, they start collapsing. And collapse they do. As these protests have been going on the full war, reached their boiling point. Which, with human rights activists rising up. With them pushing towards the capital and taking it. With a civil war in Iran beginning. With Iran wanting a democratic system. With Iraq collapsing. With the government being helped and supported by the invaders, they push over. They start taking the oil to power a war machine. With them requesting assistance from the allied countries. This happens, and this happens. Imagine being in Iran. Imagine being in a wild mapper video, but in reality, that would be bad. If wild mapping came real. Well, then again, I can predict stuff. What will happen in the next 50 years? Don't ask me, I don't know. Maybe Russia will collapse, maybe Russia will turn into the Soviet Union. You ask a wild mapper, they don't know. And while well, they sign a peace treaty, they meet in Turkey's capital of Ankara and sign the Treaty of Ankara. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia expands into Iraq, 
Same off Q8. Turkey expands into a bit of everyone because they're hungry for land. But then again, they are turkey, so you know, they're probably being a turkey. Like, they might even annex that. Don't know. What do you think? Do you think that border looks better or this border? How do you think it would end? I feel like that one would never happen in a million years, but it could happen. And then we have Iran, who has a new government. Yeah. And we have Azerbaijan, who connected to its exclave to Armenia's detriment. May I add, Armenia, to your detriment, sadly. Well, as long as Turkey doesn't go in your lands, we're fine. Okay, now my video is banned in Turkey. Great going in, Wild Mapper. Yeah, like, Wild Mapper, you're pretty cray-cray. What? Did you just call me? Wild Mapper person? Who's talking? Nobody's talking to me, actually. I'm just making a story, but you get the point. At least in this land, guess what ended? This war. And you know what Ukraine now looks like? According to this world? Do, do. Now the video's banned in Russia. Am I doing anything right? Got banned in North Korea, probably. Got banned there. Banned in Iran. Am I trying to ban it in Turkey too as well? Probably. Is it banned in China? Most likely. Is it banned in Pakistan? I'd say so. And I hope you enjoyed today's wild mapping video. Please like and subscribe. That's all for today's video. I'll